Hello, it's your friend Phil, Project Management Trainer and Coach. Welcome to our final episode of PMP Exam Knowledge Area Summaries. Today, we're talking about stakeholder management. What is a stakeholder? Someone who can be affected by your project? Someone who can affect your project? How about someone who thinks that they could be affected by your project? They're all stakeholders. If they perceive the project to be a threat to their job or to their life, perhaps you're building a huge complex in a residential area, a shopping complex, you're going to have stakeholders from the general public, from the areas nearby, showing up to those meetings, to those town halls, probably even staging a protest about what you're doing. Those are all stakeholders. So a stakeholder is someone who can affect the project, someone who thinks that they could be affected by the project, and someone who can affect the project, positively or negatively. When we talk about stakeholders in the world of the PMI, the first thing you want to do is to identify them. Now, I go into a lot of detail in this video at this link. If you go to tinyurl.com forward slash stakeholder PMP, you can watch a one and a half hour video of me talking about stakeholder management. All right. So this is the top of the waves. This is not meant to replace that. So go to that link and watch the full length video of a live classroom scenario when you get done with this. Okay. But for now, at a really high level, first thing, like I said, is identify your stakeholders. Who can my project affect? Who should I be speaking to? Who can affect my project? Who can I get that clout from? If I'm stuck, is there anyone who can affect my project so positively, so remarkably, that I need to involve them at this point? Is there anyone who has an army of employees who are going to be on that system that's been developed. Hey, I need to identify them. So apart from your project sponsor, who we talked about much earlier in this series, you have other stakeholders that can affect the project positively. I call them allies. You need to identify them. Now, in identify stakeholders, the major thing to take note of, and this is because you exam is weighted about six and a half percent thereabouts from this area, okay? Because you've got 13 percent from initiating, and this is where identify stakeholders is. So you need to know what your stakeholder analysis is all about. People often refer to it as a power interest grid, but it's really a stakeholder analysis. So make sure you know the right term and then know what the stakeholder analysis entails. It entails using a power interest grid along with expert judgment. You need some expertise. You need to have been there, done that, to know what exactly your stakeholders could be rated as. Someone without experience in a firm will not be able to rate stakeholders as effectively as a PM who's been there for 10, 15 years and knows everyone. And that's why you need to get people who know about the organization and the organization's allies and customers and the organization's sellers, people who sell, people who have partner in agreements, don't do it in isolation. All right. So your stakeholder analysis using the power interest grid is used in this process. Now, bear in mind for your exam, you need to know the other names, not just power interest grid, influence impact grid, and so on. Also, the salience model, very important. You need to be able to distinguish one stakeholder analysis approach from the other. What's the difference between power interest and influence impact versus the salience model and so on? How does the PMI define them? You need to know all four. Check them out. Check them out. Okay. Now, the major output from identifying stakeholders is a full breakdown of who they are and their level of power and interest. Like I said, the power interest grid, we use that to derive that. 
for your exam, you need to know what the different quadrants in your power interest grid really mean. Someone's in the lower left, someone's in the top right, someone's in the top left or bottom right. What does it mean? So MK, MK, monitor, bottom left, top left, keep satisfied, top right, manage close, bottom right, keep informed. You do need to know this. MK, MK, don't, don't forget that. That's a quick way you can remember what goes where on that. All right. So you take all this information about your stakeholders, level of power, level of interest. You put that into your register. And your register also could contain information about who is a neutral stakeholder, neither here nor there. And also who is a resistor, who wants to kill your project, who wants to crush your project, who hates your project, who thinks your project is a threat and is against it, negative. So we call those people, we call those people resistors. So there's a difference between a neutral stakeholder who is right there in the middle deadpan expression, neither here nor there, versus someone who is negative, totally against your project. We call those people resistors. All right. So remember that. And positive for your project. These are terms that will help you as you answer questions on your mock exams and your real exam. Moving along, our next process is planned stakeholder engagement. So we get our stakeholder register out. It becomes an input to planned stakeholder management. And did I just say planned stakeholder engagement? <laughs> I hope not, because that's a PMBOK guide sixth edition term. And speaking of which, I'll just give you a sneak preview. The next video I release after this is going to be on the sixth edition. So you better buckle up, friends. Let's get this thing done. The real name for this one is planned stakeholder management. I think I've been reading the PMBOK guide sixth edition a little bit too much. So plan stakeholder management is where you plan how to manage the stakeholders you identified. So we've got our stakeholder register coming in. We need to take that stakeholder register, take a look at these stakeholders, find out which phase are they most interested in. It's in the register. Where are they? Where are they in the firm? What do they want from the project? You get all this information about them, you analyze it, and you come up with a plan for how to manage each of these stakeholders, all right? And that's called a stakeholder management plan. Now, before you get to your stakeholder management plan, part of your analytical techniques include something called a stakeholder engagement assessment matrix. It's a bit of a mouthful, but it's really a matrix that shows you, hey, your stakeholder Phil is currently unaware he is so clueless, he has no idea about this project. But we really want him to be in a leading role. We want him to be driving certain elements on the project for us. Or we want him to be driving traction, sharing the vision. Maybe it's a change management project. Hey, we want Phil to share the vision for change and get buy-in because he's influential. Hey, that's what you do in your stakeholder management plan. You plan. This stakeholder is currently unaware. We desire that they be in a leading role. So C for current, D for desired. Or you could have a stakeholder that is currently neutral, neither here nor there, right there in the middle. But we really want that stakeholder to be supportive, just to offer some support, not even to lead, but just offer some support, be on our side type thing or support in any way possible. So you need to know the five categories of these stakeholders. And that also is talked about in your favorite book, the PMBOK Guide, fifth edition. So if you get a question on the exam asking you which category is the second category from the left, or which category is the fifth category or the fourth category, that's stuff you need to know. Check it out. Check it out. It's going to be helpful. All right. So after you get your stakeholder management plan, the next thing you do is you manage stakeholder engagement. And part of managing stakeholder engagement is actually doing the legwork. I'm talking about engaging those stakeholders, getting up from behind the desk, meeting those stakeholders or picking up the phone. 
and communicating with them with an intent to engage those stakeholders. Perhaps you have in your plan, I'm going to meet with Phil every Friday at the water cooler. I know he goes there for drink on Fridays at 12 p.m. Well, meet with Phil at the water cooler. Carry out the plan. So many stakeholder engagement is all about carrying out the plan, doing what you said you would do. Okay? So as part of managing your stakeholder engagement, as part of engaging them, one of the things that you need to do is share information. Share information. Information that they would really like to know. Information about change requests. How about sharing that stuff? If you share the status of change requests, do you know that that could get your stakeholder more engaged? It could. It could. So when we talk about managing stakeholder engagement, whatever you need to do to get your stakeholder engaged, to get them into the project, this is where you do it in managed stakeholder engagement. And as a result of doing that, the stakeholders are going to be honest with you and tell you, hey, this is this is the problem I'm having on this project. Stakeholder Z is not giving me what I need, or stakeholder Z is a covert negative stakeholder, or stakeholder A is doing so well, and you should engage them more in this particular phase, that kind of thing, right? So there's discussions, but at the same time, you also are aware of those things that are not particularly aligned with team members. So if there's misalignments, disagreements, things that people don't agree on, or people are confused about, hey, this is the place where you document, hey, we've got an issue. People are out of alignment. You know, we've got a resistant stakeholder, currently resistant. You know, this is where you document certain issues. Now, an issue is any of those topics or things that is out of alignment. There's confusion. People aren't seeing eye to eye. I'm not talking about conflicts. I'm just talking about project objectives and project content and stuff that people are not aligned with, that people don't understand, that there are gray areas about. Those need to go into your issue log. Your issue log is an output of managed stakeholder engagement, all right? So your issue log comes out of here and it goes in here to control stakeholder engagement. In control stakeholder engagement, this is where you make sure your plan is actually working so you Engage your stakeholders in managed stakeholder engagement, but in control stakeholder engagement, you are checking, you are monitoring overall stakeholder relationships. And if those stakeholder relationships and stakeholder engagements are not working, this is where you need to sit back and think, how do we increase our stakeholder engagement? How do we increase the efficiency and effectiveness of our stakeholder engagement? So you put on your thinking cap, you think, and then you make a change request for something, either to change in your, maybe it's your stakeholder register that needs to change, or maybe it's your stakeholder management plan that needs to change. Whatever the case, this is where you sit back and think, this is where you observe. This is where you can even use a temperature gauge. Well, metaphor, of course, but you use a stakeholder temperature gauge to deduce how happy your stakeholders are, how engaged your stakeholders are, how the project is being perceived by them, and so on and so forth. And if things are not going well, then it's an opportunity for you to replan, for you to change, for you to fix what's broken. And that, folks, is pretty much it for stakeholder management. I told you, go watch that one and a half hour video. I don't want to spend too much time. I've actually gone quite over the time allocated for lots of these videos, but I hope they are useful to you. If you have found this series to be useful, do me a favor, hit the like button, help me. I'm trying to help people. I'm trying to get this stuff out.
to folks who are struggling. I've heard from so many students in the past week, Phil, I paid so much money for my life course. It was rubbish. It was ridiculous. I learned nothing compared to what I'm learning from your videos that are free on YouTube. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear that you're getting value out of this. So do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit the subscribe. Those of you who do that, I know. Those of you I'm watching, I know you. Those of you who hit the ugly <laughs> thumbs down, I know who you are. But I really appreciate any form of engagement whatsoever. And those of you who have taken the time to at least comment, told me when you're taking your exam, let me know that you're out there, comments to show you engaged, I really do appreciate you. And those of you who are certified and still listening and subscribed to this channel, I doff my hat to you. If you are listening to this video and you are a PMP, I want you to do me a favor. Shoot me a message below. I'm curious. Now, if I haven't already sent you what I typically send my PMP champions, if you are a PMP and you're listening to this, guess what? I want to send that to you. So shoot me a message down below. All right. Thank you so much for your audience. Thank you for coming on the full journey. Those of you who've been there from integration all the way through to the ITTOs and the mock exam videos and this. Thank you so much. I really wish you all the best. I really hope you're going to slay that dragon. And if you're looking for some crazily, ridiculously awesome questions to cut your teeth on, hey, visit praiseon.com. Look for our mock exams. Look, you do not want to get into this PMP exam without seeing some equally crazy stuff. You know, these mock exams that we have are ridiculous. Some of them are really scary. I mean, some of the question writers, think about it. Eight question writers from different continents. U.S., Africa, Asia. We've got those great minds working magic behind the scenes, writing questions, all right, writing crazy questions. I mean, when I see some of these questions, I need to mop my brow, folks. <laughs> it's that, it's that bad. It's just like the PMP. It's just like how people feel in this exam. Now, tomorrow, if you're listening to the sound of my voice right now on December 1st, before 1.30 p.m. EST, you want to check out the x -Ban. He's going to be sharing with you about how 20 questions that are free on YouTube changed his approach, his thinking, and gave him ammo to take out the enemy, <laughs> to take out the real exam. Dial in. Hey, this is a free webinar, free webinar. Typically, my webinars are closed to our students who subscribe to our course. But tomorrow's a treat, right? We're going to be speaking to everyone live. So go to our videos. If you're listening to this December 1st before 1.30 p.m. East Coast time, dial in and come listen to a guru who killed the exam. All right. I wish you all the best and I hope that you succeed on the PMP exam. Bye for now.